Vaccination is a hugely successful prevention tool that saves millions of lives every year. COVID-19 has shown that vaccines are a key pillar of public health. This also emphasized the world's reliance on the vaccine research community, as demonstrated by the successful mRNA platform, such as Moderna's. We were able to take the sequence of the COVID virus and translate that into mRNA extremely quickly, really within hours. A combination of speed and reproducibility and then being able to take that out to sites around the world and test it in the studies that we did made it so powerful. We were able to synthesize the messenger RNA, design the vaccine within a couple of days. I think mRNA represents a true revolution in medicine. Its potential is huge. We have to realize that vaccines is the most successful tool we really have in public health to combat infectious diseases. We always underestimate the power of vaccines. In reality, we should take great pride in the efficacy of vaccines. Because every year we know that vaccines save something between three and five million lives just through standard immunization. The pandemic put the need to vaccinate the adult population at the forefront of the response to a major global public health crisis. Vaccination, being a key barrier to external threats such as infections, is essential to support our healthcare system's resilience. We vaccinate because we avoid the consequences of the infection. And the consequences are so far-reaching that it's even hard sometimes to understand the full value of vaccination. We vaccinate for HPV and HBV to prevent cancer. We're developing a vaccine against streptococcal infection to prevent heart disease. We believe vaccines can also reduce AMR. We've shown with meningococcus A in Africa, they even reduce poverty by eliminating the disease from the society. Our goal should be to prevent all infectious diseases. This can be done with vaccination, and we believe that with science and the right investments, we can indeed achieve this goal. Antimicrobial resistance, or AMR, is an ongoing silent pandemic and the source of infections that are difficult or impossible to treat, resulting in the spread of drug-resistant strains and extended suffering or even death. One particularly promising approach is the role of vaccines to protect people from antimicrobial resistant bacteria, the leading cause of sepsis, which could help prevent these infections and save hundreds of thousands of lives every year. We don't talk enough about AMR and the kind of threat this is causing to society. Why we need all tools to tackle this challenge, vaccines will be a very important one. The best way to protect us from AMR is to prevent the disease. This will reduce the use of antibiotics and reduce the onset of resistance. As the global population continues to age, we can expect to see a significant uptake in respiratory infections, antimicrobial resistance, and persistent infections worldwide. The life course approach is a new paradigm of vaccination that has been introduced in some European countries. By investing in prevention, we are better prepared to future challenges for health. It is really important that national immunization programs are well funded and inserted into the health system, including adult immunization, not only concentrating on children, but also on adolescents, on pregnant women and on the elderly population. The successes we have harvested now are in many ways the low-hanging fruit, the easy pathogens, the easy microorganisms. But looking to the future, the key challenges ahead are really to develop new vaccines against the more complex diseases. There are still many infectious diseases where we do not have effective vaccines. Many of these diseases are disproportionately affecting low- and middle-income countries. What are the main challenges that can be addressed in vaccine R&D? So the future challenges to a large extent is really to develop methods, approaches where vaccines can really attack highly complex diseases, parasites like desmoniasis, like malaria, diseases where there's a high variability like respiratory infections, diarrheal infections, hepatitis C, just to mention some examples, and to have an awareness or a preparedness to rapidly develop vaccines against newly emerging pathogens that come up and that we don't know about beforehand. 
Our technology had an incredible impact on the COVID-19 pandemic, but what we've seen in the last year alone is we have experienced new outbreaks for Ebola and monkeypox, and there's a continued threat to infectious diseases. So if we want to be part of that solution, we think that we can deploy our platform against what we call priority pathogens, those that have been identified by the WHO as health security threats. The major challenge I foresee in vaccine R&D is the business model. Public institutions are really not equipped to bring vaccines to the market, but private institutions are mainly driven by market forces. So how do we make sure that this public health agenda for vaccines is being driven by the morbidity and mortality of the disease in the affected population rather than their market potential? How do we actually generate the resources to do so? Looking at the success story in Nepal, it shows that targeted programs have the potential to deliver significant health and economic gains for their citizens. Typhibet was developed in collaboration between GVGH and a company in India called Biological E. Typhoid fever is incredibly important in lower income countries. The role we had was to put our best technology into a typhoid conjugate vaccine. Once we proved the concept, we transferred this to India. The company then licensed it locally, obtained WHO registration. In 2022, for the first time, rolled out the vaccine in Nepal, vaccinating most children between the age of 15 months and 50 years of age in one catch-up campaign for seven and a half million children. This is a massive success. It's a vaccine that requires a single dose that prevents with high efficacy typhoid fever in children six months and above, and is very cost-effective. How can researchers in low- and middle-income countries contribute to solving global health issues and get more visibility and priority in the global R&D agenda? The first element is to have the mass critique of the researchers. It is very important because we don't have an essay clinic alone. It's a whole team. To arrive to put in place this team, multidisciplinary, to arrive to retain and fidelize this personnel, that's already one of the first challenges to which we, as researchers, we have to try to do face. The second, c'est que nous arrivons à publier tous les résultats que nous produisons. Malheureusement, beaucoup de résultats produits ne sont pas publiés. Lorsqu'ils ne sont pas publiés, on ne peut pas avoir une vue sur ce que nous faisons ici. One of our most precious assets is our people. We have programs specific for training in developing countries and special programs to receive students from developing countries and in partnerships with the Nova University of Lisbon and other academic institutes in Europe and how do we move away from research colonialism to true north-south partnerships with leading positions for researchers in affected populations? Within the Shigaplex IM program, we're aligning Global North and Global South partners to develop a vaccine for diarrheal diseases. And it's that alignment that's really critical to make sure that the products which we develop have the intended impact. Even the most effective vaccines are only successful when individuals in need can access them when and where they're needed. Collaboration is key for the R&D community to work better together. Collaborative research help develop vaccine R&D innovation and tools that otherwise would not be possible. One of the things that we have learned in the last year is that openness and collaboration and sharing of results and data is really key to a rapid success and rapid development of vaccines. I bet DNA is to promote the links between academia and industry. We want to predict the needs that our partners will have in what concerns R&D. We are partners with EVI and a few others trying to push the Transvac concept uh, one step further ahead. The idea being we need a good infrastructure in Europe that is able to take from the labs, which are more basic science driven, into vaccines that may create cures for lots of diseases already in place or the new pandemics that will suddenly arrive. We've seen the positive impact that our technology has had on public health, but we know that the best ideas are not always gonna come from Moderna. So by sharing our platform with experts around the world, we're going to leverage our skills and our expertise to accelerate that public health impact. Vaccines can really have tremendous global health impact if done right. And particularly if we think about vaccines for low middle income countries, there's a lot of stakeholders involved. If you want to get it right, you have to get all these people around the table. Collaboration and knowledge sharing is necessary in solving complex health challenges. 
sharing scientific expertise and latest research among partners from diverse sectors, including governments, academia, healthcare leaders, and other critical stakeholders is paramount. That the research community come together and really openly share results and data and resources. And the European Vaccine Initiative is really promoting this very strongly and that is our main purpose really to try to create a critical mass of resources, both human resources, expertise and financial resources that when you bring this all together rapidly can develop new vaccines or better vaccines, safer vaccines and affordable vaccines for the people who need them most.